Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Glover. I've been wanting to do this one for a while. It's not really that long, and it's a really good classic N uh, N64 game that is pretty damn underrated. So we'll see how it goes. I really like this intro, too. I've always really liked this intro. And the music. Oh my god, the music of this game. Alright. The big reason I'm doing this is because the Game Grumps are doing it, and uh, they're going to quit after Episode 2. Like, I already know this. Because I know the Game Grumps. They're already predisposed to not liking this game. So for those of you who also watch the Game Grumps, you can now watch me try and actually show you why this game is good and enjoyable. I have so many files here. Let's go ahead and make a new game. Uh, most of them are like very not complete though, so let's go ahead and do this one. This one's 2% not complete. My name is... Uh, I, I can't be Mark. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Wow, I'm, I'm pulling a John here. Ugh. Because Mark is a Zelda thing. Instead, I'll be... Ockle. My name is Ockle, everybody. We'll do it on normal, on normal difficulty. The big reason is that, like, if you do it on easy, it you can't get some secrets and stuff. All right, so here's the story. It's the castle and the wizard, who's making some potions. Oh, let's see how this potion goes. It doesn't go well. Be accident. I like how he screams as he's petrified into stone. One of his gloves flies out the window and the other f falls into a cauldron. The crystals that are keeping this land secure and powerful and magical and good have to be transformed into balls, otherwise they will shatter on the ground. Luckily, one of the gloves seems to do that. And that's us. We are Glover. And the other glove turned into Cross Stitch. The evil glove. Lovely glove. This is a super creative, like, original idea for a game at the time. Basically, it's a uh, platformer, but the main gimmick is that you control balls. Well, like, you don't control them. Mr. Tip says, hi, I'm Mr. Tip. Tell me things. Or ask me things, I should say. Which the Game Grump should do, by the way. Anyway, so you have your ball, and uh, you bring the ball to the end of the level. You have to collect each ball from each world. Right now, we only have one ball, and we can't get into any of the worlds, because the, wor the this world is, like, completely dark and evil. So, you gotta take the balls, and bring them to the wizard. Who has somehow turned into a fountain down here. Whoopee! And every single time that we collect a new crystal and give them to the wizard, it becomes better. Like, the world does, I should say. It's very slightly better. It slowly becomes, like, less dark. And then, also, the next world will open up. Usually they have, like, force fields in front of them, making it impossible to, to enter. You know how it is. Now then, we are in the first level, Atlantis. And the way this game works is you have to collect the ball in the worlds and then bring it to the end of the level. There are several things in here called Garabs or Garrets or something. I believe it's Garabs. It's these things, these cards. And you can change your ball into different things. Oh, that nearly just killed me. If your ball breaks, you are dead. Like, you, you, it, it's, it's game over. Uh, not game over. Like, it makes you waste one of your lives, basically. Alright, I just did that to show off in the crystal form, you get extra points from uh, collecting garabs and things. If you get into a uh, line, you also get extra points for getting garabs. Over here is an extra life that I might as well collect. You have four different forms for your ball. You have the bouncy ball, which uh, is rather generic and you can use it to bounce around. It's the one you'll want to use the most. Uh, you can turn it into a bowling ball, 
which is not very bouncy in the slightest, but is heavy and hard and good for slamming into enemies. You have the marble ball, which is good for getting, like, going super fast and getting up obstacles. And you have the crystal, which you will, like, literally never want to switch to, because it is very fragile and will constantly break. Now, you see these Garibs, they get you points, and there's, like, several that you can get in levels. I will not be collecting all of the Garibs. I will collect all of the Garibs on the Atlantis levels off-screen, just to show you what happens when you do it. But doing it in all of the levels is really difficult. Like, I've never been able to 100% this game, and it's, like, really freaking hard to do it. So instead, I'm just going to try and, like, run through the game, show you how it goes. When you're in the water and on the bouncy ball, it floats, because it's a bouncy ball, it's full of air. So, you, uh, do that, you know, you, what, how do you say, you balance on it as it's floating. It's pretty cool. So, it's your generic, like, platformer, otherwise you can jump, you can double jump, you can, you can butt slam, which is what we're supposed to do. Just with special ball physics. And in that way, it's very unique. I mean, what other game are you playing as a hand grabbing balls? Probably the game that you play with... No, okay, never mind, I'm not making that joke. Get up there, Glover, thank you. That was a joke that I should not have made. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, in order to beat the level, you have to take your... Uh... That's also not what I meant to do. <laughs> Just slap the ball. Come on, I want to get up here. So I can get another extra life. Woo! Where'd my ball go? You can find out where your ball is by pointing at it, like by using B to point at it. You can also change it like that. Okay. So Glover's cute. He's adorable. The game grumps do not like this game. Or at least they. John seems to think it's okay. Aaron is predisposed to hating it because it played it once and didn't like it. They're kind of like that sometimes, unfortunately. Me, myself, I love this game. It's an underrated classic. What always made me laugh, though, is, uh, like, on the box and also, like, in the actual thing itself, I believe, it says, only for Nintendo 64. They always used to have that on the boxes. Only for PS2. Only for Nintendo 64. If it wasn't a cross-game, if it wasn't a cross-console game, it would have that. And it would be like, you know, only on this console, so get it for this one. And, uh, that's not true for this game. Now, we don't, I don't actually have to go down here, but I might as well show you that it's here. Just so you can see. Here's some garabs. Here, here's some, uh, garabs. Or whatever the hell they're called. Alright, go back up. I like the Atlantis level. The music's really good, too. Alright, so in order to get this puzzle, you have to do this. In order to fill this up with water, so that you can uh, better go onto it. The problem with floating like this, though, is that the controls get reversed, and it's really hard to, uh, to control yourself on that. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, it was on the PS1, I believe. And, oh no, oh no, oh god. If the ball dies or you die, you get you lose a life. And you have to restart at the last wavy thingy here. Now, what uh, the the PS1 version I have never played actually no, I think I did play it once. I do not remember anything about it, but I remember hearing about it in that it was horribly stunted and terrible. I don't remember I, do I can't ever find out why. All I know is I hear that it's a terribly botched port, and that the Nintendo 64 version is pretty much the only one you'll ever want to play. I'm not sure why, this is just what I've heard. If anyone could explain in the comments, that would be cool. So, as you can see, that switch has a uh, yellow and red symbol on it. That shows that you need to put the ball on it, and you can't, like, slam on it. You can slam you slam on the one that has like this other symbol, the symbol that you have on you. We bouncing. You can't bounce in the water. Okay. 
goodness. Okay, well, I can throw it. Not like that. Wrong throwing. Throw it like that. Hold B in order to throw it up like a, uh, like that. But most of the time, you want to bounce around a lot. I can bet you they, like, were like, they didn't know that. So they're probably like, oh, this is freaking annoying. You gotta throw it everywhere. God, terrible game. Excuse me, I shouldn't be talking about the Game Grumps. Also, I shouldn't be talking about them in a negative light, because I honestly really enjoy them. It's just sometimes they're predisposed to hating games. Anyway! I've already said that a few times. Here's a potion. I believe it's called the Hercules Potion, which you can use to push this. It's used for different puzzles in the game. This game's good with the, uh... What is it called? Um... Conveyance. In that, okay, well you have that, what am I going to do with it? Yes. Something more simple than some other puzzles that will happen later. All you do is you get the potion, you're like, what should I push? Well, this seems to be on a track, so I could probably push this. Okay, that's pretty easy. And then later on, you'll know that what the Hercules potion is for. Level 3 already. This would be going a lot slower if I was collecting all the Garabs. Like, trust me. 80 Garabs in this level, and some of them are like hidden. You gotta go in, like, different areas to find them. You have to explore the level. Then just, instead of just, like, go off on, like, your own little tangent. Whoop. I don't know why that is there already. Whatever. Okay. We're about to find another potion. There are multiple potions in this game for you to take to upgrade Glover's abilities. The first one that we saw was the, um... Hercules Potion. This one's the Speed Potion, and I just screwed it up because I'm so used to playing- Whoa! That was close. I'm so used to playing a game- I don't think how I can control the ball in midair, actually. I- I was playing a game earlier today that was all about- Oh, come on. That was about, um, I mean, that- that, like- I, Okay, I was playing with, uh, Zelda, and you use the Z button to make the, the camera go behind you in Zelda. I'm going to go ahead and wait until I slow down, so I don't die. Uh, you use the Z button to control where the camera is in Zelda. You don't do that in this one. You use the uh, C stick, which is way better, but there's like no way in order to make the camera move behind you without using the C stick. I not C stick, the C buttons, which kind of sucks, but eh, it's alright. And boom. There's your uh, spinny wheel going. Now you gotta make your way back to the spinny wheel. The good thing about this game is that, like, if you do these puzzles and then die, you just go back to where the the uh, the last save point was. You don't have to redo the puzzle or anything. Ah, oh, God, that guy hurt me. Glover is a little bit weird, though. I mean, you got he's got four hands and like two of his. Uh, I, four, uh, fingers, excuse me. Four hands? Okay, I'm gonna turn this into a bowling ball so this is a bit easier to deal with. There is a giant... That's hilarious. Actually, I'm gonna turn you into marble so you're way better to deal with. There's a little band-aid on this marble. If your ball gets hit too many times by, like, these things, or, like, nearly popped a few times, then, uh, it will explode and pop and you will lose it. And you gotta go back to the checkpoint. It's just funny that it still has on a band-aid when it's like a bowling ball. Because really, a marble and a bowling ball that have- oh god. A marble and a bowling ball that have like holes in them, nothing really happens to them. The bowling ball already has holes in it. It just- I guess it just shows that, you know, Glover- I almost called him Flubber. Flubber! <laughs> can transmute the ball perfectly well, but he cannot transmute band-aids. How he can make them just by himself, I will never know. I was talking about something, but I forget what it was. I don't know. Probably not important. Garabs. Little card thingies. Go ahead and switch into a marble so we can get down here easier. If you uh, get these things in like a quick succession, then you will get a uh, bonus in points. But points don't really matter. They never did in any video game ever. Uh, there's a really weird area over here and I'm tempted to show it off 
Whoa, I nearly just made my uh, game fall. I'll go ahead and show it off. I got plenty of time. Okay, go ahead and switch to a bouncy ball again. And bounce over here. This is a place where you get Garabs. It's not required to actually go here. So just so you know, this is over here, and there are some Garabs here. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this, because it always creeped me out. It was a really creepy but cool area in the game. Because of this. It's the freaking monolith! You just go up to the monolith and... And then you're, like, inside of it or something, and it's, like, really weird. And here's another, um... Here's another potion. The Sticky Potion. It makes you walk slow, but you get to walk up walls. And you use this to collect Garabs. Simple as that. You press Z when you don't want the potion in order to undo the potion. What does this do? I have no idea what that does. Okay. You, you, oh, those guys, when you kill them, also give you Garibs. I'm just telling you, in case you want to 100% this game, I don't. <laughs> I probably could have spent this game, uh, this this episode, like, getting all the things. But, uh, because it's going to be a short episode, the, this level isn't exceptionally long. And I'm doing one world per episode. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to appear way over here. Whoop! Boy. Okay. Shazam! Let's go up here. Uh, this game, like I said, isn't exceptionally long. There's like seven worlds, and uh, each one will take me about an episode to do. Some may take me longer, like maybe an hour at most. But it won't take me like freaking Majora's Mask times to do this game. This game will be kind of short and will be done by the end of the summer. Along with another good, underrated N N64 classic, NN64, yes, that I will do after this game is done. I don't get what this is, but we go in it, it's a whale, that, a whale balloon, I don't understand, but it's the end of the level. That is so weird. Alright, and now the boss. In every boss, there's Cross Stitch seeing a thing. And he's like, this is a thing. And then we need to make it better and more dangerous to fight against. So he makes a giant... I don't know what any of these things are. There's a crab, obviously, and then some kind of fish up there. Okay, so the way you beat this boss is you slap him. You slap him with your... Oh, crap. Oh, that's an insta-kill, right. Luckily, in bosses, you just teleport back. God, just... The next boss is going to take me freaking forever, because I hate that boss. So you just slap him with a bowling ball. What was that? I wonder if they've already come out with the next episode, because it's like 4, four o'clock. And usually they have, like, two each day. And they would have come out with both by now. Okay, so there you go. How did I get a level up? Level up. Okay, well, I killed the crab, and now all we got left is the, uh, puffer fish here. He's floating around, and he's going to shoot bubbles at us. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to try and stomp us. Now, the way you deal with him, I'm going to go into, uh, rubber ball mode. So I can easier deal with this asshole. Okay, maybe I won't. Instead, I will just, um... Go ahead and stomp. Oh, that killed me. Okay. This will make it a bit easier, though. So, y you just gotta hit him with the bowling ball, and it's best when he just, like, stays down after a while. He'll just stay there, and he'll give you ample time to hit him with the bowling ball. It's a little hard to aim the bowling ball sometimes, though. For some reason, it looked like he was on the ground, so... There, I got him. Oh, that didn't do enough. Wait, can I just... Okay, I can just do that. What am I thinking? 
Okay, I killed him. <laughs> Go ahead and, uh... Cool! We are out of Atlantis, and we have our ball with us. You missed some Garibs! I don't care! I'll get those later. I'll get those off screen in between this episode and next. Alright. Well, so now that we have this ball here, we can go ahead and bring it to the wizard. And that way we can unlock the next level. You see how this goes? They're like, oh, this sounds like a dumb idea. No, I think it's rather, rather clever and a very interesting idea. It's a lot different than a lot of other platforms on here. Like, we have a lot of collectathons like Banjo Kazooie. Don't get me wrong. I freaking love Banjo-Kazooie. I freaking love Banjo-Tooie. I love Donkey Kong 64, all the rare games. I love Mario 64. I love every game on this goddamn console. But, Glover is very unique and a very good game. So do not knock it before thou dost try it. Is just what I'm saying. So in the next episode, well, actually in the next episode, I'm going to show you off uh, what happens when you collect all the Garabs. And then we'll be going to the carnival level. So, uh, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all next time for more Let's Play Glover. See you all then.